what is up you guys welcome back to my channel thank you for clicking on this video if you're new here if you like what you hear please hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time i upload lately in the news we've been seeing so much about aliens ufo sightings and all of you who have been here for quite some time know that i'm a common sense person i break things down from a christian worldview because everything that the bible talks about in regards to the end times is now front page news and this was all prophesied 2000 years ago 3000 years ago 4000 years ago from basically genesis until now i have a video called the great mystery revealed where i talk about Things that our ancient histories have in common, like floods, giants, pyramids, all these things that tie together. And I talk about how the Bible also has those things in common with ancient history and basically go into ancient aliens in a sense. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit in this video and talk about what aliens are from a biblical perspective, because a lot of people don't know how how can aliens tie into Christianity? Like, what is there another alien planet? Did God make another planet somewhere? Are there billions of planets somewhere with other humanoid creatures or what is exactly is going on? In Genesis 6, it talks about how when humans began to increase in the number on the earth, daughters were born to them and the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any one of them which they chose and the Lord said my spirit will not contend with humans forever because they're mortal their days will be 120 years instead of them living longer the Nephilim were in the earth on those days and also afterward when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans they had children by them and they were heroes of old men of renown and the Bible basically talks about how human beings became extremely wicked after that to the point where every thought of theirs was evil continually and we know that the, the world was flooded and every single the every single culture has a flood story meaning that once upon a time this was front page news once upon a time this happened i talk about that in my other video at that time it explains here that there are three different types of beings there's god who's completely spirit there are the sons of god and then there are daughters of humans obviously there's male and female but we have another sort of creature here the sons of god and in hebrew the term is bana elohim and that literally means the, the sons of god and that has been understood over and over to mean angels. We know that there are celebrities who've talked about sleeping with spirits and ghosts and all that kind of stuff. They talk about this in other forms of, you know, the occult and all of that. So the idea that a spirit can sleep with a human is not far fetched. I'm not going to get into all that right now because I talked about that extensively in my other video. But what happened when this DNA gene splicing came to be was that there were hybrid creatures born. Netflix just dropped the show called Sweet Tooth talking about hybrid kids. All over you have, you know, TV shows where all of the, you know, superheroes are human in form with supernatural abilities. They're the X-Men are gene spliced. So they're showing you this on, you know, Netflix all over TV. What happened when this, these sons of God, these angels, these other creatures mated with human women, they gave birth to these hybrid creatures, that they were the heroes of all the men of renown. So the Egyptian gods and goddesses, the Greek gods and goddesses living on Mount Olympus, our superheroes today are the Nephilim. That's my personal belief. Obviously, our you know superheroes, Thor and all of them, Superman, they're all fictional creatures. But the idea is that they are the heroes the titans the this the that and when you actually look at you know greek greek so-called greek mythology greek religion and all of these other ones they have so much in common with things that are talked about in the bible and people don't really want to connect the dots so please check out my video the great mystery revealed part one i will link it in the description what happened when these people mated with humans and had these hybrid creatures the wickedness of the earth human race became extremely bad so that the human heart was only evil every single thought was evil continuously so there was some sort of internal shift that happened with human beings where they did not want to do good something happened inside of their let's say their dna inside of their minds that was a shift spiritually that turned them evil continuously to the point where they were no longer human they were no longer in the image of god and god had to do away with them i talk about this but in the book of enoch it talks about these watchers by name it talks about how there was a group of them i believe maybe 200 of them who made a pact and said that you know what we we were sent here to watch human beings but we are going to mate with them and we're going to do whatever we want and we're going to make an oath and to me how does that tie in with aliens the bible says to that there are there were giants in those days and afterwards so we have 
places like, like Netflix making shows about hybrid humans. We have the Bible talking about these fallen creatures being able to DNA splice. We have the Bible talking about how Satan can masquerade as an angel of light. What ascended masters, you know, people who get into their cult talk about spirit guides and a lot of them who are now Christians say that they began to question who the spirit guides were and then they got attacked. And there's so many testimonies about that here on YouTube. It's crazy because there are so many things happening right now that I read about in the Word of God that are right in front of me on my TV screen. We have been conditioned to, to expect the coming of beings from the sky. I personally believe that all of this is getting us ready for the Great Falling Away. I touched about on this before on this channel. The Great Falling Away is basically what is going to happen where there's going to be something that happens on the earth, I don't know whether it's going to be in my lifetime, probably, or maybe after, where it's going to be such a cataclysmic event that is going to shake the faith of people and make people around the world and every single faith imaginable leave it and be deceived. And I know that obviously, you know, I'm going to talk about this in this video, I know that Christianity obviously talks about it, and I know Islam talks about what I'm going to talk about, but I'm not going to address Islam's view on it right now. It would just be a lot to bring up their scriptures and their own personal beliefs about what I'm about to talk about. Everybody's waiting for a messiah figure. Every religion has some sort of messiah figure or some sort of one day this uh, a being is going to come and usher in a new era. And with the Bible, there are things called messianic prophecies and I use it this way. If you had a friend named Steve who was going to come into town and he had no idea what I looked like and for whatever reason Steve did not have a phone or you couldn't send him a picture of me or social media didn't exist, you had to describe to him what I would look like. You would say, oh yeah, you know, this five foot two, you know, short black girl, she's slim, you know, she wears her hair in a bun all the time, she has brown eyes, dark hair, she's going to pick you up at the airport and she's going to be wearing like a blue sweater, right? If you saw Lucy Lou at the airport, you would know that that's not my the description of me. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, the prophets wrote about two coming people. They wrote about the coming Messiah and they wrote about someone who Daniel calls the man of sin. The Messiah had these messianic prophecies where it described, you know, he'd be born of a virgin, he'd be born in Bethlehem, which they call the city of David. If you read the text closely, it talks about how he would suffer and die as a lamb, like a lamb to the slaughter and be an innocent man blamed for other people's crimes and how he would take on that punishment basically without saying a word. Um, it talked about how he would resurrect from the dead and it basically talked about how he was equal with God and that he was basically called the son of God and how he's gone into heaven and come down from heaven and all of these different things. So, for example, let me just bring up the three wise men. They knew from them reading the scriptures that, okay, the Messiah is going to be born and we're going to see this sign and we are going to know when we see this child that this is the promised Messiah. The thing that people have wrong is that when Jesus came the first time, everybody expected him to be this warrior king who was going to come like a superhero. They expected him to come like a superhero and defeat the Romans who were oppressing the world at that time colonizing the world at that time the roman empire was crazy and they expected him to just do away with all that and bring about a time of peace and stability where the the israelites were going to just live in perfect harmony but while all of that is true that's not why jesus came the first time because we have two events we have the the messiah that was going to come as a lamb to the slaughter which was written about in isaiah and then we have what we call the Day of the Lord, which was written about by the Old Testament, in the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament, where God was going to judge the world. The Day of the Lord, the judging of the world, the end of the world, and the new era that's coming after, the new heaven and the new earth, has not happened yet, obviously, because we're all still here. And anybody who's telling you oh, it already happened, that's not true, obviously. When Jesus came the first time, I have to say this, in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about how the children of Israel, the Israelites, the Jewish people, had broken their covenant with God over and over and over because they kept going into idolatry and all of that, right? And so he was going to make a new covenant with them. He says, literally, 
it's not going to be like the covenant that I made with them when I took them out of Egypt, which was the Mosaic covenant with the 613 laws and all of that kind of stuff. But I'm going to make a new commandment. And it basically also talks about in another chapter how he was going to take, remove from them a heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. In the book of Isaiah, it talks about how, you know, um, burnt sacrifice and all of the rituals that people were doing to appease him were not appeasing him because they were doing it out of performativism and not from the heart. And when Jesus came, he fulfilled the messi messi uh, many messianic prophecies. Obviously, he hasn't returned, so he hasn't fulfilled absolutely all of them. But he fit the criteria, he fits the description of the Messiah based off of the Old Testament prophets. And he came to restore, the first time he came to restore our relationship with God and teach us how to properly be in a relationship with God. And I'm going to say this as a disclaimer. Obviously, there are bad Christians. But that does not mean that the Bible is flawed. It does not mean that Jesus is flawed. It means that people are people. And that people are going to do whatever they want, regardless of what God is telling them to do. That's just human nature. Like how your parents tell you don't do this, and you do it anyways, because that's human nature. So I don't want to hear that, oh, but Christians, no, 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 no. Oh, the Catholic Church, no. All right, I'll talk about all of that in another video. I'm pretty sure I talked about that in a video maybe two years ago. But anyways, we talked about how the Old Testament talked about two people, the Messiah and the man of sin. Jesus came, preached to us, obviously, you can read it for yourself, eyewitness accounts in the Bible, died and was resurrected in front of 500 eyewitnesses, is written about extensively. We have more proof that Jesus existed based off of historical evidence than Alexander the Great. And he ascended into heaven and he will return. And there's many different signs about, you know, the Bible talks much about end times prophecy. So you can look at all that for yourself. But the thing about it is, all right, we have, we're in the in-between of Jesus leaving and his return. So right now we're going to get on the man of sin. In the book of Daniel, Yes, the same Daniel from the lion's den. And the same Daniel who was friends with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, a.k.a. the Hebrew boys who were thrown in a furnace during the Babylonian captivity. Daniel had many, many visions about God. And God showed him this person that was called the man of sin. He's described as an absolute ruler. It talks about how there would be four different world empires that were like, you know, Medo-Persia at the time because the Persian Empire was extensive. Babylon, of course then Rome, and then we have other ones that people interpret to be like the Roman Empire, Greco-Roman Empire, and that basically everything else was going to fall apart, but this last kingdom was going to be kingdom of all kingdoms. Four world empires are described as four beasts. And the Bible says, fitting the character description, this is a character description, that this person, the man of sin, would speak words against the Most High, and he'll wear out the saints of the Most High. Eventually, his kingdom will be replaced by the everlasting kingdom which will be given to the people of the saints of the most high he is the one who is opposed to christ and he's the last great ruler and in the book of daniel chapter 11 verse 36 it says that he will do according to his will and he'll claim to be god and he'll exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and he's against the gods of the past Later on in the New Testament, it says that there are many antichrists that have gone into the world, but that the last one would also, you know, be a world ruler, that he would assemble the armies of the world together and, and go to war against God. And you're asking yourself, how could anybody in their right mind, like, okay, most people, if they say, I don't believe in God, that's one thing. But if you said, okay, if God came down here, would you want to fight him? I'm sure a lot of people would be like, no, like, I, no, I don't. You're asking yourself, how could there be this, you know, World War Three of the Bible describes, I think, a 300 million soldiers fighting against God. And you're like, who, like, what, what is going on? And that all the armies of the world would gather together against God in the Valley of Megiddo. He, how does this tie into aliens to me? I'm glad you asked. For everybody in the world to have a cosmic shift and say that we don't believe in God anymore. We believe in this other thing this creature that's coming, the Bible describes it as the, basically the unholy trinity, that there's the Antichrist, there's the false prophet, and then there's the beast. The Antichrist is going to be the one who comes. And how this ties into aliens is my personal belief is that aliens are demons, that they're fallen angels. The Bible says that Satan can masquerade as an angel of light and so can his ministers, meaning the demons. If that is the case, 
when you look at stories about aliens and alien abductions, they always come in a spaceship. A lot of people say the first thing they see is lights. They see these beings, they get abducted by these beings, and what do they do to them? Everybody who has an alien abduction story, it doesn't say, oh, they just slapped me and then left my room. No, they abducted me and did experiments on me. A lot of them say that they did sexual things to them, that they took their DNA. And what happened in Genesis 6? We had DNA splicing, that these beings mated with humans and had these hybrid creatures with them. The people who are in New York City who witnessed 9-11, none of them will ever say the story that's different from what they saw. They saw it. They saw planes crash into the buildings. That is literally what they saw. It was right in front of their eyes. How is it that for thousands of years or hundreds of years, we've had so many people say the same exact thing with alien abductions? I personally believe that, you know, obviously these beings can travel from another dimension to the next. I believe that for some people, they're more susceptible to demonic influence, demonic oppression, demonic attacks. And so that's why they're seeing so-called aliens. And the crazy thing is that there was a man named Aleister Crowley who was called the most wicked man in Europe back in the, early, in the 19th century, the 20th century. And he was kicked out of Italy because of all the horrible occultic things that he did. Long story short, he channeled a being that he said was a, a, a god from another, from another dimension. And when you look at the picture, it is an alien. That's literally what it was. But this was before the time of so-called alien invasions. Because in America, it was really the 1940s, what, 40s or 50s, where we started hearing about alien invasions en masse. And it started to basically snowball from there. We have this DNA splicing in the beginning of time before the world flood that is a historical event because every culture talks about it. We have every culture talk about these, these hybrids. And so what's next? Why is the news telling us about aliens over and over and over? And these aliens are kidnapping human beings and taking their, their DNA and creating what are they creating? God only knows, right? Netflix is coming out with a show called Sweet Tooth talking uh, has already come out with a show called Sweet Tooth talking about hybrid creatures. American Horror Story Apocalypse is talking about all of these people in Silicon Valley buying underground bunkers and how they're getting ready for the end of the world and the Antichrist and how they're basically going to destroy the world and then after that come back and re-inhabit it with the Antichrist as their god. So all of these secular non-biblical sources are saying the same exact thing. And I personally believe that, you know, the alien, so-called fake alien invasion, I'm calling it fake because there's, I don't believe in aliens, I believe that they're demons. And that the Bible says that Satan is going to have power to wear out the saints. Just imagine how much we're going to be ridiculed as Christians when the alien invasion comes. People are, oh, it's not in the Bible, all oh, you guys do oh. And then everybody who basically, this, 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 this creature, if you, <laughs> on the Sci-Fi channel, they had a, a mini-series called Childhood, Childhood's End, where aliens basically announced that they were going to come to Earth. And so everybody put down their war, there's their weapons and all that, and they were like, we're going to get together and welcome these aliens. And tell me why when the alien came, it was the devil. It was literally Luz, the, Satan, it was literally Satan coming out to... To, to, to come be king on the earth and everybody was like, wow. The Bible says that when people see the beast, they're going to marvel and say, who is like the beast and who can make war with him? And I'm just saying all of this to say that whether this happens in the next 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 200 years, that there's a reason why the Bible is becoming less and less popular. It's not because it's wrong. It's because the devil and all of hell knows it's right. And they are trying to deceive you. And the Bible says over and over, don't let anybody deceive you. Search the scriptures for yourself. Test the spirits and see whether they come from God. That we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but that our enemies are principalities and wickedness in high places, meaning these invisible entities that we can't see. And there's so many people who are Christians who, or people who have, you know, now become Christians who said that when they saw aliens, they said the name of Jesus and the alien ran away. The people who said that that got them out of sleep paralysis because the Bible says that Jesus was given authority and that in his name we have authority over demons, fallen angels, jinn, aliens, whatever you want to call it, sickness, all of that stuff. The Bible is so much deeper than people think and I just want people to 
really read for themselves and just study and just understand that like human history is so long and there's all of these like cords that are tying us together and the thing is when this fake alien invasion comes G we already know like christians we know that jesus is the messiah but the thing about it is that you know jews and muslims are waiting for the messiah to come and the thing about it is when jesus came the first time like i said he came to restore a relationship with god but he's coming back in the end to judge the world but because we are the only group who has said oh the messiah has come and he's coming back everybody else is still waiting for their messiah figure to come so unfortunately when this 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 creature comes he's going to be the great divider because he is going to have world power world authority he's going to have the this this person called the false prophet and the beast who is going to be doing miracles um literal miracles and controlling things in the sky right in front of you like it's a movie and so people are going to say you know what it doesn't matter that you're jewish that you're hindu that you're this that you're that this person is obviously god and you know i i pray because the bible has warned us already that the antichrist is coming um and that after when he comes he's going to make a fake peace treaty it's going to be he's going to reunite the world then he's going to break this peace treaty and the crazy thing is even now we're in a in a state of the world where there's medical apartheid going on because of you already know what that i can't say and we're going to get to a point where if you don't believe in this figure there's going to become come a time of persecution that no one has ever seen before that will make you know 1940s germany the inquisition all of those things seem like nothing because it's going to be that you're either with us or you're against us and if you don't believe in the antichrist as god you will be persecuted and it's to the point where he's going to it's going to become hell on earth and that's all in the scripture you could look at the book of daniel you could look at the book of revelation and all of that kind of stuff but in the very end he is going to I personally believe, you know, we have the, the then comes the mark of the beast. He's going to implement a system where you can't buy or sell unless you have this card, unless you have this mark, which is a mark. And I personally believe based off of what we've been reading about, you know, alien invasions, hybrid creatures in history, not just the Bible, but history in general. He is going to hook people up to the cloud let me say that he's gonna hook people up to a cloud a neural link system a hive mind system and people will not have human dna anymore and that's how people are going to not be in their right mind or they they made the choice because they were faced with oh you can't if you don't have this you can't come in the store and so if you don't have this you can't buy or sell any food and they are going to to sacrifice their eternity to follow this fake god and give up their 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 eternal souls and a chance of redemption and once you have this mark you are no longer you can't go to heaven anymore you cannot buy or sell you cannot be made in you're not made in god's image anymore you are a different you're a hybrid at this point and you've signed up to be in satan's army at that point and um when god judges the world when the day of the lord comes it's to the point where all of these people, instead of being remorseful, are going to be angry at God. The Bible says they're going to blaspheme him when he starts to judge the world through, you know, all these supernatural signs and, and, and nature going crazy, basically. And um, you can read all of that in Revelation. And in the end, instead of repenting because Satan will never repent, he and all of these people who are, you know, in his army, the armies of the world are going to gather together and go to war against god and and jesus is gonna come basically come out of the clouds and and it's gonna be world war three and but in the very end you know the the false prophet the beast and and everyone who followed them who got the mark they have to go into the lake of fire because that's where satan is going the thing about it is satan knows he's going there and he's if you can't have me nobody can if i can't have you nobody can have you that's his mentality and he's trying to drag all of humanity with him and the thing about it is the bible is so criticized attack well, criticism is fine but it's attacked it's it's ripped apart people disrespect it there's people who are well-meaning people who literally believe that the bible has been fabricated people literally believe that paul and the disciples or somebody else came after jesus and corrupted the entire book 
and they don't do any research you know when you when you talk to them about it they just they don't they don't care like that's what they've been told their whole lives and instead of looking at the historical research and saying okay like what are, is the bible even true where what, what about the people in the bible what about you know david solomon jesus what are, are they even real like what what does history say about them they couldn't care less and it's like they're Satan has been buttering them up for for when you get a turkey on Thanksgiving the week before Thanksgiving there's only one destination that the turkey is it's going in the oven and um <laughs> you know so it's unfortunate but that's really like the bible said that there are people who are growing up with us that are not us and that they're wheat and tear and if you if you're into farming or you just look it up wheat and tear look exactly the same but Jesus said, you know what, the angels are going to separate them. And I think right now, because of everything that's happened in 2020 and everything beyond, you know, uh, Event 201, Agenda 2030, the Great Reset, we're being separated into who's really about it, who's really going to follow God no matter what the cost is. Because the thing about it is, this is temporary anyways. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and, you know, God is going to show us all who he is who the real god is i feel like i feel like we're in the time of elijah right now and jezebel and the false prophets of baal where it's like all right who's the real god here and so um but the thing is i don't want to wait until the sky cracks to to make my mind up about who the real god is i think that jesus has proved that he is the messiah and that and there are people all around the world who are waking up to the fact that he's the messiah which is a beautiful thing and um the thing about it is i say this all the time is that rituals cannot save you we're not saved through works we're saved through faith faith we're saved through faith and we're saved through god's grace so you can donate a billion dollars to charity and pray 10 million times a day but that doesn't make you righteous that doesn't guarantee you a spot in heaven i can say i know that i'm going to heaven not because of what i did but because of what god has done for me because god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life and you should read the Bible for yourself. I would suggest that you start with... Oh gosh, I can't even... Yeah, I would suggest maybe you start with the book of Psalms if you want to take it easy. And then read the book of... Um, I personally love the book of John and then the Acts of the Apostles. And then you can go backwards to Genesis if you want. But I really think that everybody, whether you're a Muslim, especially if you're a Muslim, whether you're a Jew, whether you're a, an atheist, whatever you are, God put us on the world with each other. And the thing about it is you have all the time in the world right now to read whatever you want. And I say this all the time that I research other religions, I read other religious books, I do a lot of deep dives in research. But all of the research that I do actually brings me back to Christ more and more because it proves how how I I can't save myself. Every other religion is saying you do all these things and God will be pleased with you. But Christianity says, you can't do anything to, to, to make me pleased with you, but I love you anyways. And I'm going to show how much I love you by taking your sins on me. And how I always say this is, you are on death row. Imagine you're on death row. Imagine you're in, in court and the, the books are stacked against you and you owe $20 trillion. And there is no way that you could ever pay that off, ever and you don't know what to do. It's either you pay the $20 trillion right now or you go to jail for life and you don't know what to do. And at the last minute, a lawyer walks in and says, you know what, I'm going to defend this person pro bono and on top of that, I'm going to pay their fine or I'm going to do their life sentence. You would literally worship that man. And the thing about it is that's Jesus. He's the one who took all your sins upon him. Because if you read Isaiah 53, Go, go online, Google it, Isaiah 53, and read the whole chapter. And it talks about how there was a servant of God that was coming at that time. This was written 500 years before Jesus was born, that there would be a servant of God that would come and take on the sins of the world. And just read out that chapter and pray and ask God, whatever, whatever God you believe in. Who is Jesus? Because everybody wants to argue. The funny thing is everybody wants to argue about Jesus. Oh, he was just a prophet. Oh, Jesus and God are two different people. Oh, Jesus was just a cool dude. You know, he was like Buddha. Oh, how come everybody wants to argue about who Jesus is? Doesn't that make you wonder who Jesus is? Because 
if everybody was saying, oh, Tumi's like this and Tumi's like that, and no, she's like this, that's, that's not a lie. She's like that. I would want to talk to Tumi, and I'm me. I would want to talk to, I would want to talk to that person and say, you know what? Let me actually learn about you and see what you said from your, for your, from your own mouth out of your eyewitness t testimonies and, you know, not listen to this person said this and that person said that about you. What did you actually say? And see who you are and judge you with my own two eyes, you know? So I just wanted to make this video and basically warn about my personal beliefs, the coming deception, and I don't want anybody to be in this great falling away because especially the church, because I can I can possibly see mega pastors, I'm just gonna name some, I'm not saying that they'll do this, but let's say T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Hillsong, all of them just say, you know what, this guy is, is him. When the character description was in the book all along for the past 3,000 years, yeah, I just want you guys to be on your A-game and your alert, and I want to encourage those of you who are not Christian, because I know for a fact people have said it, that, oh, to me, I'm a Muslim, and I really like your videos, and we have, I know you guys have the, the, uh, the Dajjal and your belief system and all that kind of stuff, but I would encourage every Muslim person, every Jewish person, everybody, everywhere, my Hindu friends, everyone, to read the new testament for yourself what's gonna hurt you you know like what is what's gonna what's the worst that could happen to you if you you know i've been reading the quran since uh, 2014 and doing deep dives into islam and so that hasn't hurt me has it so yeah <laughs> yeah i want you guys to everyone should just read the bible for yourselves because i can say anything i want but you can open the bible and figure out whether that's true or whether i'm lying to you based off of you know is to me even telling us the bible correctly so yeah guys i just wanted to talk about that thank you so much for watching this video god bless you and your family i'll see you in the next one bye